Hey guys, it's Sevi. Today we're doing a 15 minute artifact farming route. This is best for new players to Genshin Impact, those who are of low adventure ranks, who are looking for ways to get free artifacts without spending any resin. So this route takes place in the open world. You can go around certain locations where artifacts spawn. You get a whole bunch of one to two star artifacts, which are really great for upgrading your four star and five star artifacts in the future. Of course, we're using our current best boy, Kazuha, to do this artifact farming route because I love him so much. All right, so I'll be showing you where to teleport, where to go and grab these artifacts, and just in case I miss any of these locations, just go ahead and comment down below. This is my regular farming route, so it pretty much works for me. We're starting off in Qingshi Village, and we're starting off at the teleport waypoint here. You just have to go into Granny Roshin's uh, gazebo, and by the crates here, you already get a couple of artifacts to start with. Sometimes the numbers vary, but you still get a good amount. If you continue on down the bridge, keep walking. You could pick up some vegetables, but the artifacts are over here by the clay pots. There's another artifact location before we have to teleport again. It's down here. Now we're going to the teleport waypoint just west of Qingshi village. We have one artifact location to check out here. So go past that gate and over the bridge. And then we have some artifacts here over by the weapon rack clay pot. Now our next waypoint takes us to the stone gate. Some of you might be surprised that I'm uploading this artifact video when it's a bit meant for beginners, but I think there are a lot of beginners joining now. We're going to walk a bit down the path here. And there's a little artifact sparkle over there. <laughs> the only thing is that sometimes you end up talking to Pops Jo if you <laughs> click the wrong thing. Now we're teleporting over to Min Lin, this teleport waypoint here that doesn't really have a name. And we have two artifact sites close by. One of them is surrounded by treasure hoarders, so you might have to do some fighting. This is one of my daily combat practice, have fun kind of things. I actually like to bring around new team comps or characters that I'm getting friendship levels on or, or building or trying to get to know on my artifact farming route because um, the enemies that I encounter are weak enough to, you know, just have fun with them. I like bringing Sucrose around and Kazuha here, for example. Now we're going here to these broken carts for more artifacts. I like how Kaza has short enough to fit under the cart. The cart. If I bring Zhang Li, he he can barely fit. He like tries to glitch out and stuff. All right, we're going to the beach this time. To the west of Gilly Plains, and I try not to disturb the Geo Bishop Hatchling here because he's such a pain to fight. So I just go inside the cart and yeet away. I just had a quick observation, guys, that it might just be my YouTube algorithm or what YouTube is recommending to me, but it seems like a lot of Genshin YouTube content or videos nowadays is really geared towards endgame players because those who know their stuff obviously have been in the game for a long time and their demographics are really those who are AR, 55, 56, even 57. Let's just get the artifact here. Sorry, Mr. Boar. So there's an artifact here, don't miss it out. And then there's going to be one further down near the boat. So grab your artifacts here at the boat. And we're not done yet, there's still another great artifact site nearby. I don't know my YouTube demographic as much, I don't really know what AR you guys are, so if you want to share with me, if you're at start game, mid game, end game, just waiting for Inazuma, tell me below. So there's this little shed here with a lot of artifact sparkles. You can get a lot here. 
Maybe like 10 to 15 if you're lucky in the day. And instead of teleporting to a new waypoint, we have several more artifact sites to visit that aren't closer to any other particular waypoint. Sometimes when you're doing these farming routes, it's just best to keep running. <laughs> it's just best to keep going instead of finding the nearest waypoint, you know. One thing about these artifact sites is that they're kind of in between. Um, sometimes I skip these sites just because they're far away from the waypoint. But you have this whole wrecked village, wrecked carts and barrels, and you get a bunch of artifacts here. Not all of the sparkles are artifacts. Sometimes they're fruits and vegetables or even iron. Um, but then there's this hilly churl here, which you can just teleport away from. <laughs> Because this time we're going next to Mount Aosan. Actually, one thing I'm excited about for Inazuma is how the new players will be feeling about it because they're going to have so much content to explore, guys. If you're if you're a new player, not going to lie, I low-key envy you. Alright, we have more treasure hoarders here and we have some sparkles with artifacts. We're just collect those. You can find the treasure hoarders if you want, but I'm just teleporting right back. Because that straw hut that we saw in the distance, here it is. That has a couple of artifact sites too. Thankfully there are no mobs nearby. You can even pick up the Jueyun chilies. And here. Next, we are visiting the top of Mount Aotsang. We're going to do some flying this time over the stone forest. Also, can I just say that <laughs> the music of the Huangguang stone forest is probably my favorite in the entire game. I had this phase where I was listening to the Liyue soundtrack a lot and it was this theme that I kept going back to. So we're going to drop down here. I'm gonna grab the artifacts here from the clay pots and then from the crate. But we're not done yet. We are going to teleport over to Mount Hulao. And listen to more of the lovely music. We're gonna fly again because there's an artifact site to the east of Mount Hulao. You can jump. Please don't die. <laughs> you just gotta fly a bit there it's marked by the little star in our map if you're a new player make sure to mark these artifact spots on your map um, I like to use the star icon but just mark it with whatever you like it will help you remember the farming route and grab the artifacts here that sparkle over there is fish or vegetables it's not artifacts <laughs> there's only one artifact site there this time we're heading over to Jueyun Karst Dreyun Karst has a lot of artifacts around it, actually. If I'm in a hurry and can't do my full route, Dreyun Karst is one of my sure visits because I always get some good stuff there. I also like to experiment comps with those slimes sometimes. <laughs> but this time, uh, I'm going to show you where the artifacts are. It's over here again by the treasure hoarder tents. Seems like these treasure hoarders like to hoard artifacts because... They are often nearby. We're going back to the same teleport waypoint because if you head down the path going south, there are even more artifacts there. In this straw house, you see that sparkle over by the crates, collect the artifacts there. Sometimes you can hear those two men arguing. And then we have more artifacts by their stall and inside the tent. Don't teleport away yet, just keep running. Just keep running and don't wake up that sleeping hilly churl. <laughs> Unless you really want to. But you'll encounter a couple more hilly churls in a second. So in this tent, again by the clay pots, you have these artifacts. You can fight the hilly churls if you want, of course. Or you can just teleport away. Fighting is totally optional in this route. If you're quick enough, you can get away unscathed. <laughs> Next is Tianchu Valley. Just teleport over there to the flat uh, land area. 
And this time we run following the paths. The nice thing if you follow the paths in Liwa actually, you don't really encounter any monsters. Just some boars and some oars. <laughs> but yeah, if you follow the paths, you pretty much won't get hit. Except by wild boars that you can hunt anyway. Well, there's the baby one. Sorry, kid, but I need you for my cooking and my bacon. <gasps> there's another one. Bam. I have no mercy. They attacked me, I attacked them. Alright, we have another artifact sparkle right here. Again, you don't have to fight this guy. You can just grab the artifacts and go. Just get them from the wreckages. Usually, if you want to check if there are artifacts, look for the ones with the wreckages. Those hilly trails with their own torches should really watch out for us Animo users because they just get burned and melted and pyroed all by themselves. We don't even have to do anything except swirl them. This time we're heading over to the west of Mount Tianhong. We have a couple of artifacts right below. The artifacts this time aren't in a treasure hoarder tent, instead they're in an adventurer's camp tent. So that's another type of place that you can check if there are artifacts. Um, if you come across an adventurer's camp tent and you see a lot of the bags and stuff, it's likely that there are artifacts or at least some vegetables there. So you know, if you're a new player, foraging is a nice habit to have. You get a lot of ingredients and sometimes artifacts. Wow. <laughs> This time we're going back up to Dihua Marsh. Of course, you can do these teleport waypoints in any order. You can do them from north to south, whichever is most convenient for you. But from that Statue of Seven, we're just crossing the bridge. That sparkle, unfortunately, is not artifacts. Instead, we have to walk a little ways away over to the house. Another way of reaching the house that I like to do sometimes is I teleport to Wangshu Inn and I just fly from there. <laughs> Either way, when you get to the house, there's something by the chests here, a couple of artifacts, and then by the clay pots once more. Next, we're going to Sal Terray. So teleport here. Sometimes there's a ley line. If there's a ley line there, I like to hit two birds with one stone and accomplish the ley line, maybe for the battle pass or just for the XP or Mora. You can swim across the lake, but sometimes there are slimes there, so I'm just running around instead. There's another adventurer's camp tent here that I'm gonna grab the artifacts from. And right next to it are some iron ores also, if you want to grab those. Now we're heading over to Mingyun Village, the Statue of Seven over here. Mingyun Village is a lot of climbing. It's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of terrain. It's also where you'll find a lot of violet grass if you're ever farming for Chi Chi or Sinyan. Violet grass is such a pain to collect, but if you need it, Mingyun Village is the spot. We're heading over to another adventurer's camp tent right here for more artifacts. These adventurers are really stocking up on artifacts. <laughs> also guys, if you didn't know, Kazuha's vacuum that he makes with his skill, it can vacuum in drops. This time we are teleporting to Ridge Watch. Guys, we're almost done with our artifact route. See, it's quick, it only takes few minutes of your time. So here at Ridge Watch, you can do the domain, but honestly, I kind of hate that domain <laughs> because I'm so unlucky with the drops. This one is a bit of a ways away. <laughs> it's just that Ridge Watch is still the most convenient place to teleport for it because trying to get to this area from Stone Gate yeah, yeah. is a pain. So we just keep going till we reach this small adventurer's tent. Again, the adventurers have some artifacts stocked for us. This time we're going into Dragonspine. 
Yes, you do go to Dragon's Bind for artifacts. It's not a completely dead area, but still one of my least favorite areas to visit, not gonna lie. So from that teleport waypoint, go inside the cave. Go inside Entombed City. And there will be a couple of artifact drops. You can also pick up some Star Silver Ore if you want, although we're really just here for the artifacts. And then we're teleporting to Starglow Cavern. I love it when it snows. And just run a bit down, drop down into the cave. And Dragon Spine brings back all our flashbacks <laughs> and memories. And we have some artifacts in this shelf over here. Sometimes it's nice um, exploring, you know, the open world and the artifacts and the ruins and all that furniture that Mihoyo kind of kind of sprinkles around the world to explore. Feels like there's a lot of life and a lot of depth to the lore of the world and stuff, but that's pretty much it guys. That's the quick artifact farming route. If there are some sites that I missed that you like to visit, go ahead and comment down below. If you're a beginner or if you didn't know about this route, I hope that this helped you out. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys, and I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.